This episode of Hack Tip is brought to you by Ops Genie. Your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Shannon Morris, and today we are going to start writing a program using shell scripting. Now, so far, we have done some cutesy stuff like echoes, and we learned about formatting. We haven't done much that would be useful for day-to-day -day maintenance or reporting on our Linux computer. So today, we are going to learn how to generate a report that will show us data about our computer in HTML. So if you ever owned a website, say Angel Fire or a GeoCities website way back in the 90s, I know I did, Sailor Moon fangirl, I had tons of galleries, or if you used to work on a WordPress site, even today, you have probably used HTML in one way or another to customize a website. Since HTML is pretty simplistic, I am not going to be discussing how to program in HTML here. I am going to be using it for this example. Now to write a program, you will start with your favorite text editor. So I'm going to use gedit, you can use vim if you want to, or vi, or whatever. I don't care, just use a text editor. So I'm going to edit my doc with gedit, and it's always going to start out the same way. So I can pull up gedit with gedit space, and then a forward slash bin slash, and uh, whatever you want to name your text document. So I'm going to name mine sys info and then hit enter and it's going to open the text editor. So now you can type out your new program. Now I'm going to go ahead and type mine out, start with this shebang and forward slash bin, forward slash bash, enter, enter. This is where I'll put my comments. So I'll say author Shannon and I'll do another comment that says, um, this will be for system info. And then I'll add all the information that's going to go into this uh, program. So it'll be HTML. And I'm also going to echo, I'll do a tab right here instead of a space or a header. And I'll add a title. Okay, so I closed out both the header and the body and the HTML with that last slash. Each of them ends with quotes. Yeah, that looks good. And each of them begins with quotes. And then I have some tabs in there and some spaces. And they all begin with echo. Okay, yeah, looks good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save. And yeah, the cuddler coordination looks right to me. So I think everything is correct in here. Cool, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of there. Now I will make that an executable file so it just runs instead of opening the text. So I'm going to type in chmod755 and then my file, which is slash bin slash sys info, there we go. And then if I type in sys info now, okay, cool. So this is running that as an executable instead of just typing out whatever it exactly said. So for example, you're not going to see the echoes at the beginning of this because it's running that as a program instead of just a text file. Cool, so working so far. Okay, basically what's happening here is if I just type in sysinfo, it exports everything as standard output, which is what the echo command forces it to do, which is not what we want. What we want is to turn this into an HTML document that can be viewed in the browser. So in order in order to change it into that, I'll type in sysinfo and I'm going to turn this into sysinfo.html and then hit enter. And now I can open it up with Firefox, for example. So Firefox, sysinfo.html, hit enter. This will open up Firefox and it says, this is my title up here in the headers right there. And then this is a body of text, which is the HTML that you will see on the website. Ta-da, yay, it worked. So that was cool, but it's still not doing much. So after the break, we are going to start cleaning up the program before we add data. Stay tuned. Incidents are inevitable. They can happen at any time and how your company responds matters. Dealing with incidents when they happen requires coordination between your ops and your software dev teams, who are honestly unsung heroes who put out fires every single day. So getting alerts immediately is critical whenever an incident occurs. That's why there's Ops Genie by Atlassian. Ops Genie empowers your team to plan for service disruptions and stay in control. It gives teams the power to respond quickly and efficiently to unplanned issues, and it helps to notify all the right people through a smart combination of scheduling and escalation paths that take into account things like time zones and holidays. Huh, who'd have thought? 
Ops Genie also allows for deep flexibility in how, when, and where alerts are deployed, and it's supported by over 200 integrations like Jira, Amazon CloudWatch, Datadog, New Relic, and a lot more. It tracks all activity and it provides useful insights to improve future incident responses. I mean, when you're running an online service for thousands or even just a few customers, they're going to notice whenever something goes down. And if your main op is on vacation, you don't want to be the one trying to figure out how to solve the issue and get your customers back online while you're also trying to run the company. So Ops Genie will escalate that issue to the right person who is available, your unsung heroes, for example, and they can solve the issue and your customers are happy. We all want customers to be happy. Now with Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com to sign up to get a free company account and add up to five team members, no credit card required. That's OpsGenie.com. Never miss a critical alert again with Ops Genie. We are now back with writing our first big program with shell scripting. Actually, it's not that big, but that's okay. It's a great example. So we have the bones of a program. That's good, but we need to clean it up a little. So first, let's make it a little bit easier to read. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up that HTML document with my gedit, and there we go. It looks beautiful right now, but that's a lot of echoes. So I'm going to delete all those echoes and all those extra quotes and make it a little bit more simpler and easier to read. All right, that looks a lot better and I'm going to add something here, just yay, so I can tell that I actually saved it. So save that, exit out, and I'm going to go ahead and run that sysinfo again and then go ahead and open it back up in Firefox to make sure I made those changes. This is a body of text, yay. All right, so far so good. Now, a few things that I wanted to point out. My program here is still starting with that shebang bin bash. That has to happen at the beginning of every program. Also, you could just delete the comment line at the beginning, but it's always wise to have some sort of information at the beginning, especially if you are sharing this with other programmers like on GitHub or wherever you end up putting it. When it comes to the echo lines, you could just totally leave all of those echo commands in there, but that complicates things. So cleaning it up and just making one echo line minimizes that chance of a mistake occurring. And as you saw, the echo line still runs. Also, you have to run the HTML command whenever you make a change. So I had to do that system info and then caret sysinfo.html before it would make the change, even though I had saved the file. Now you do not have to turn it into an executable every time. It's already there. It's already ready to go as an executable. Now stay tuned because because coming up on Hacktip, we will be adding some new data to our new program to make it actually useful and not just show you a body of text, because that's no fun. We want it to do things. Until then, I want to hear your feedback and what program you are using and what you have written before. Comment below and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. Trust your technolust.